So in this presentation, I'm going to be showing you how to make the stunning Gerber daisy. Now, Gerber daisies sometimes are called gerber daisies. My grandmother actually used to call them gerbil daisies because she couldn't pronounce Gerber or gerber. So um, as I said, it has many sort of various pronunciations, but a very, very popular flower comes in many, many colors. I'm going to be showing a variety which is going to have a sort of yellowy green black center, and then it's going to have bright pink petals. But of course, you could do this in orange, in white, in red. It's enough, also a fun alternative, maybe more contemporary alternative let's say for a Christmas cake to do like red Gerber daisies rather than say red poinsettias or obviously for a 50th wedding anniversary bright yellow ones or red ones for a 40th wedding anniversary instead of roses. So a really lovely flower and this is obviously the um, ultimate uh, sunflower and daisy mold all right so this uh, obviously in the sunflower introduction I talked a little bit about this so I'm going to refer to it again. Um, this is an amazing mold which has got lots and lots of uses. So first of all, this is the sunflower center. So there's obviously a separate video on how to make the sunflower center and then how to use do the large sunflower petals. All right, this is for the smaller sunflower petal and I'm also going to be a smaller sunflower. I'm also going to use this same one for the Gerber daisy. So this is the cavity I'm going to be using in a moment. And then for sunflowers, we're going to be using this, uh, the smaller, smaller petals here. Okay, for the small sunflower, which again, both of those obviously are separate YouTube videos. This is the cavity I'm going to use for the Gerber daisy center. And then I'm going to use this part here for the um, inside petals. And then this part here, for the outside petals and then uh, this is actually going to be used for the calyx of the Gerber daisy all right and then the other parts that are on this mold is for the classic marguerite style daisy where this is the center of the marguerite daisy this is the actual petals uh, this is the bud and then this is the calyx all right and then there's a separate obviously mold and video which deals with also of course the daisy leaves which you'd use for daisies and of course the sunflower leaf is on that same mold and this comes with a back veiner. So as you're going to see, I'm going to use this to also vein the back of both the inner and outer petals. So, anyway, so let's get started. We're going to, first of all, make the center of the um, Gerber daisy. All right. So this is going to be your center of your Gerber daisy. You can see these is, and of course you can do these on long wires, like, you know, cause traditionally when you buy Gerber daisies, they're on a long stem. So if you were doing a more contemporary style cake or on my uh, videos on my tulips and things, and on my small calories, I do them as the, like the floating calories. I, you can also, you do Gerber daisies in the same way. Now, um, you, you can use green wire if you are doing dark yellow centers or sometimes a brown center or black center. But generally when you're working with more pale yellows or white centers, because some centers are done in a cream color. So depending what variety you're doing. So generally most of the time when I teach Gerber daisies, I use white wire, okay? So now, so of course, these are full length wires, so you could use them as is, or you could cut them down to, for example, half length, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna take my, because the wires here, as I said, are about 14 inches long, so about 18 centimeters, so 36 centimeters long, and then if you cut them in half to seven inches, or about um, 18 centimeters long. Okay, so I'm gonna take three, three wires. If you already watch my sunflower, this is done very similar to the sunflower, and this is also the same way I make the small sunflower center. So you can also watch that on the uh, small sunflower. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna use some half width floral tape, light green, and uh, we're gonna start 10 millimeters from the end of the wire. So just gonna hold your thumb and first finger. So you want to be about 10 millimeters from the end of the wire to where you start taping. Just start with the floral tape. Before you sort of go down too far, just check that you are at 10 millimeters in length, okay? Because it doesn't want to be longer than that. And then you're going to then just tape down from top to bottom. But so your length of your wire will be dependent on how you're going to use the Gerber daisies, okay? We're then going to take my wire, I'm going to open this up. So just going to open up one wire to start off with. And we want this to be at a 20 degree angle. Now, this is just a protractor I basically just downloaded, just put into a Google like protractor, and I just downloaded this, or if you have one. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna do this so it's gonna be 20 degrees, okay? So from here, you can see that the actually angle 
from the wire is actually 20 degree angle. Okay, so I just downloaded this onto card, put it onto card and then just cut around. But obviously you can pick up a protractor to use because that's the angle we also use for the sunflower as well. So when I do the sunflowers, so you're just going to then just make the other ones comparable. All right, so you have your three, so your angles look, look correct, okay? And that would be your center, how we prepare the center. Now I'm gonna use here a sort of a lightened yellow. So what I've actually done here is I'm just using straight uh, flower modeling paste. Um, so I'm using basically equal amounts of yellow and white. So basically it's diluted by equal amounts of white. So it just makes a sort of a slightly paler yellow, okay? Um, but as I said, sometimes Gerber daisies I've made in a cream color. I've also made some Gerber daisies have like chocolate brown, very much like the way I make the sunflower. Now on the sunflower, <coughs> excuse me, when you watch the sunflower videos, you will see how I use uh, generally 50-50 <coughs> um, paste, half flour paste, petal paste, gum paste, and half sugar paste or rolled fondant. Because the sunflower bigger, it its center is larger. Generally when I make Gerber daisies, I just use straight petal paste, flour paste, um, gum paste, okay? Because it would just dry a little bit quicker. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just condition this paste with a little bit of vegetable shortening, fat, white fat, and that's gonna be made into a smooth ball. We're gonna put just a little corn flour corn starch onto this and it's gonna put that into the mold and you're just gonna press it into the mold so it wants to be level with the edge of the mold, okay? So that sort of the rim is gonna be level with the depth of the mold and you see how it's gonna look a little bit like a muffin or a cupcake. It's gonna have like a round or Yorkshire pudding sort of shape, all right? So you have that sort of muffin top there and then we're gonna take some egg white, put that onto the wire. Okay, so we're gonna put some egg white onto the wire and you're gonna then place this into the middle like that. All right, and then you're going to twist the wire. So you just twist it. And so what that's gonna do, is going to embed it into the paste, all right? But you see, if you make it 10 millimeters, it will come fairly close to the edge and it's gonna to give total support to the middle of this part. Here, all right, so you're just gonna mold that around with your fingers like so, okay? You're gonna flex the, flex the mold and then comes out, you see how you're gonna get this beautiful center part there, okay? Now, just like on when I do the, um, when I did the sunflower, I'm gonna use tweezers and I'm just gonna go around the edge here and I'm just gonna just do some little uh, pinches with my tweezers here, just around the edge. Now on the large sunflower, we do that um, every like two little seeds. You're just doing it randomly. So just gonna go around the edge here because obviously these are a little bit smaller. So what this will do, this will give you these little cuts here. So it looks like almost the first layer of petals, all right? Now this will need to dry for about four to six hours, all right? Because I thought it's a little bit smaller than the obviously big sunflower, still takes a little time to dry. Again, a food dehydrator is something I use a lot. It's something I generally would recommend that you, you know, if you're gonna do a lot of sugar flowers, especially when you have wet or humid weather, a uh, food dehydrator is wonderful for big flowers like sunflowers, peonies, pop them in the food dehydrator. You can hang them in the top of it, slide the rack in, you leave them in there four to six hours or overnight, it's gonna be totally dry. So it does help a lot, okay? So here I've got a, obviously this is a dry one, so this is ready to um, move on to the next step. So I'm just gonna now get ready and uh, in the next step, I'm going to show you how we actually put the petals onto the dry Gerber Daisy Center. So I'll see you real soon. So once your flower center is dry, we're gonna move on to the petals. Now I'm using here, um, remember I said, for those of you that are new to Flower Pro or if this is the first ever Flower Pro YouTube you watched, I hope you watch all the other 30 or odd of those. But um, in there is a video which is basically just like getting started, which talks a lot about the paste. It talks about the size guide. Also in book volume one, volume two, um, of course also that talks a lot about that as well. Um, so I use uh, being Brenshaw's brand ambassador, I use Renshaw um, flower and modeling paste or petal paste. Obviously flower and modeling paste comes in different colors. Um, and so, but because this paste dries fairly quickly, what I typically use is a ratio of 85 grams of flower and modeling paste, and then 15 grams of sugar paste or rolled fondant, okay? So basically this is your gum paste or petal paste, flower paste. This is your sugar paste or rolled fondant. So what I've done here is I'm using 85 grams of pink, and then 15 grams of fuchsia. Um, or in the US we have a pink, which is a sort of comparable color, like a bright pink. 
All right, so you can see here, these will give you the colors, all right? So what you do is this 85 grams and 15 grams, mixing those together will give you this lovely, almost like a bubblegum pink, a bright pink color, okay? But add in the sugar paste, the rogue fondant to the flour modeling paste. What it does, it slows down the drying process a little bit, so it makes it a little bit easier. It's not gonna dry too quickly, all right? For some things I show, like where I've just shown the um, center of the gerber daisy or gerbil daisy, as I said, my grandmother used to call them the gerbil daisies. But when you make the center, I just use straight gum paste, petal paste, flower paste, all right? Because that's gonna dry ultimately quicker. But when you're doing things where you're pushing things sometimes into the molds, or you need a little bit more work in time for a flower like a peony or rose, I often use this modification, all right? But uh, when you're using uh, homemade paste, of course, or you're using white paste, if you don't have colored uh, petal paste and sugar paste rolled fondant, you just, of course, can add some pink and bright pink colors to get it to the shade you want. But also, of course, remember that you can make these in different colors as well. So, okay, so I've got the paste here. So we're gonna start off with the inside petals. Now, for the inside petals here, going to use um, here, this is gonna be the inner petals of the daisy, okay? So what we're gonna do here is gonna measure off a number seven small, okay? So we're gonna use a number seven small. So that's going to be a number seven size. I've just pre-measured these. And you would make three of these, okay? So you're just gonna make three of these small. So this is gonna be a number seven small, so that's gonna just go through the hole, okay? We're gonna take the little bit of vegetable fat, very small amount, like a release, and just put that into the mold, okay? And then what we're gonna do here is I'm going to use, same concept I showed for um, the sunflower. I'm gonna make a 50 millimeter or five centimeter sausage, okay? So usually I would just use like a little silicone mat or something to roll on. And you want to make this, so it's going to use this. And you can just use, you can do this straight on the size guide as well. But usually it's easier to roll off of there. And then I'm going to cut this into 10 millimeter pieces, all right? Because we need five, we need five petals here, okay? And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to just roll those between my fingers like this to... They look almost like little claws. Now on the sunflower, we have three petals. The Gerber daisy, we have five petals here, okay? So I've already got the little bit of uh, vegetable fat on here, and I'm gonna just put this, so you're just gonna put that towards the center, so I'm about three to four millimeters from the end of the petal here. This will be my fourth one. This will be my fifth one, okay? So you see how that's gonna sit in there. And then we're gonna take your cosmetic sponge with my cosmetic sponge here. Just gonna just press this in towards the end of the petal. And then you're just gonna just work your paste down. Use your cosmetic sponge. Just work that down to the bottom, okay? So that will fill your mold up basically level, but you get a little bit thinner in the end, okay? So the reason why we don't put the point right on the end there is it would make it a little bit too thick, you see? So we filled the mold up now. So now we're gonna take the back part of the vena here. Just gonna press this onto the top, like so. So this is actually gonna vein your petals, okay? And then we're gonna just flex your mold. This will come out very, very easily out of the mold. And you see how you're gonna get this nice veining onto here, okay? I'm just gonna pop this onto a sponge here. So I'm just gonna put this onto cosmetic sponge there. And then what I'm gonna do, is just going to use my point of my companion tool, just gonna to just gently come in from the side. Now on the sunflower, I softened here, you don't have to do anything. And then what you would do here is you would put this onto, into a plastic bag, like on a piece of parchment paper or wax paper, a piece of cardboard inside there until you've got three of those completed, all right? Now, once you've got three of those completed, I'm going to then take these and put these onto my, here. I'm gonna just take these out of the bag, all right? So I have these pre, pre-made pre here, okay? And I'm gonna put these onto my cosmetic sponge. So this is very much like the small sunflower, okay? So you're gonna take these, these three here. So you're just gonna bring them together one, two, three. You see this is designed to go together to form like a full flower, okay? 
course you could use this for larger daisies as well all right so when i show the marguerite daisy i'm going to be using obviously this one here but you could actually do larger daisies with still the same center but just do the back like i'm showing you the gerber daisy so that's why we call this the ultimate sunflower and uh, mold because you obviously can do so much with this i'm going to take your dry center and with my dry center i'm going to then just brush some egg white around the back of this okay so just up to where the little bottom of the snips are or the marks with your tweezers and then you're going to just push this through the middle here all right so you're going to pull this through just going to put those petals together okay and you're going to just pull this through until your center sits into the middle here like so all right i'm just going to pull that in nice and firmly and then you see how then you're just going to make sure that those petals are just molded around just going to push them on like this and then what i do is i use my fingers like this because i want these to be just a little bit in curved okay so you see how you're going to get the sort of the shape of your inner petals of your but you can see this could be obviously just the large daisy as well okay and then what you want to do is you want to just hang this upside down all right so you're going to just hang that upside down to dry now when I do this flower, I typically would do, do if you were making, say, three Gerber daisies, I do the center and then I do the outer petals, the center of the outer petals. Because when we put build the flower, we want those middle petals to, to be soft because we want to push them back to sit on the uh, main petals. So we really don't want them to dry too much. Now, when we move on to the main part of the flower, okay, we're going to do a similar technique, uh, except we're going to use the bigger, the bigger petal here. All right, and so this one here is going to be done with number 10 small. Now we actually will need seven of these. So you need three of the three of the first ones, all right, which is going to be seven small, and this is 10 small. We need a total of seven of those, okay? So same sort of concept, all right? Now here we're going to use your size guide. And what I'm actually going to do is going to do this 100 mils long, all right, so 10 centimeters or 100 millimeters, and I'm going to cut it into two 20 millimeter or two centimeter sections, okay? This is just a way that I developed uh, to when I'm doing petals to make it easier to get everything correct, okay? So you're just going to start off rolling on your little silicon mat or on your board until you get the All right, so this wants to be make that a little bit long. Just wants to be about, just wash that up a little bit. There we go. So just wants to be about 10 centimeters long. Of course, you want to make it fairly even along there so that when you then cut them, the pieces will be sort of fairly comparable. It doesn't have to be exact, but this sort of gives you the, the petals. Of course, I've done all the hard work for you in obviously working all of this out, all the sizes and things like that. So this just makes it really easy to do. And then we're going to take your large pedal. And then with your large pedal, you're going to do exactly the same. You can just put a little tiny, tiny bit of vegetable fat into there, shortening. And then we're going to just take the and again, we're going to go about five millimeters from the end here. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so same sort of concept. And then we're going to just sort of start. You see how I'm stretching them down to the end? Because this way, what it means is your petals won't be too thick at the end because you're going to get them thinner. You know, most people, when they see the Flower Pro flowers, are shocked in how... Really, they look very comparable to making flowers with cutters, but the advantage of Flower Pro is obviously your investment in time is much less, but plus also um, investment in money as well, because you're going to be able to create everything. And if you have any excess paste on these larger ones, you'll have a little bit of excess paste. Just trim that off with your little scraper or with your knife, okay? So you wanna just stay within that perimeter of the of the mold, okay? That's quite important to keep that sort of squarish because when you build the flower, you obviously, if it came over the top, it's not gonna sit together like a quadrant, okay? And again, we're gonna take exactly the same concept. So we're gonna take the back part of the vein here, okay? Gonna flex this out of the mold 
here. And then you can put this onto, so the larger ones here, you can pop that onto cosmetic sponge and then just with your end of your companion tool. Remember this comes as a free gift with the uh, ultimate filler flower mold, but it is also sold uh, separately. We sell this with a little mini pad, which is really useful uh, for, as I said, for lots of different flowers. All right, and you can start putting those into a bag. Um, so basically you can start off with three and then you're gonna do another um, four here. So you'll have your seven petals, okay? Now, when you build this, um, you can build this onto a piece of foam with a hole in the middle of it, all right? Something else you can actually use, which works really well, is you can actually use the back of your rose mat, all right? So this is what I'm gonna to use today. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just take going to start off with three petals. Now the inside petals we to use three to make a perfect flower. Here we're actually going to take 17 petals, okay? So we're going to actually use, and so that's why we have an odd number. We have seven petals. So using your scissors or your scraper, you're just going to take these two off. You see these petals will then sit into there like so, okay? So now I'm going to just use my thumb and finger and just gonna just press that into the middle. You can just use a little cornstarch on your fingers and you can just almost like fuse those petals together, okay? So it's gonna fuse the petal, the inside petals together. Just make sure that you build that where the hole is, all right? So that's gonna be your first layer of petals and then we're gonna repeat that. So we're going to now take some egg white and you're gonna brush egg white into that middle area here to the base of where the petal veining start, where the petals sort of start opening up, okay? It's like this. For this beautiful color, you'll see this later is really stunning. Uh, once it's dusted, it's gonna have a sort of like a black eye in the middle of it and a sort of greeny yellow color onto it as well. So now we're going to take the remaining petals. And you see now these are going to be built. All right, so what you do here is you're gonna just start, so you're gonna go in between these petals here like that, you see? So you're just gonna build these and then you're gonna do the See, so how easy is that, okay? And so whether you're working in air drying clay or in sugar, it's a really beautiful way to make the petals. And of course, you've got the vein in and the petal shape and just makes it look much more realistic. And then the last two, you know, then we need to gain two more petals, okay? Now remember, you can do that with a little scraper or you can use your scissors here. Just gonna cut those off. So what you'll actually end up is with one petal empty. We're finished, okay? So remember you have you know three groups of five and then a two and then you have another two there and again we're going to just press that into the middle just use just a little cornstarch into here okay just going to pop that into the middle here like there okay i'm going to use um, a little bit like i did on the sunflower you can either use your end of your large jumbo balling tool or a rolling pin just to sort of just to just sort of press just to make a little cavity in the middle it just also helps to fuse the petals together okay and then we're going to you need to have a former and you can pre-make this this is the same as the small sunflower so this is a five inch or about 13 centimeter square of foil and i'm using half of a two and a half inch styrene ball so you're going to just sort of use the so you can have these made for as many Gerber daisies as you need. We're gonna put that into the mold here like so. All right, and then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna carefully just take this, take this, just make sure that's not stuck onto there, okay? So I'm just gonna slide this off and just gonna slide that into the, into the former. So you're just gonna sort of sit into the former, so it sort of sits into the middle of the former like that, okay? And then you're gonna take your middle part that you made okay so this is your center part now remember this i'm doing in actual time so you've got an idea about you know so this takes of course when you make this part it will take you about 15 minutes 15 to 20 minutes but this is going to mean that you put your egg white onto here and then it's going to just push this through the middle of the flower here just make sure that goes just make a hole through the center and then you're going to push, push this through goes through the foil, there we go. It's gonna just sort of sit into, into the middle like this, all right? Now at this point here, you're going to 
create a little bit of a sort of a cup shape because the Gerber Daisy is a little bit sort of cup shape. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my wire, I'm going to fold my wire in half, and I'm going to put it into a drinking cup. And because my center is dry, I can just push that in just gently. And see, I'm holding with my finger and then I'm going to just uh, take the Gerber Daisy. And then these inside petals, you see, these are still soft enough. We can just push those down so they actually will just rest onto the petals there. All right, and just like on the sunflower, uh, what we're going to then do is going to just take some little foam pieces. So the outer petals will be fine. They're already pretty much set. What we're going to do now is just going to take some small, small foam pieces here. And again, I'm just going to use my, these are silicone tip tweezers. I'm just going to use those to just lift this up and just going to take some of the petals here. Just going to use your tweezers here. Just going to take some of the petals and those are just going to just give a little bit of shape to the Gerber Daisy. Now Gerber Daisy is a fairly sort of flat flower. Um, and so, you know, don't get too carried away with this and you don't have to necessarily do, you know, all of these. It's just sort of here and there. Just taking some of these petals and um, just going to take the petals here. But see, having the uh, in the you know using the Renshaw paste, but of course there's you know many different brands of petal paste and flower paste and gum paste, and of course there's also in book one and in book two, volume one, volume two, there is also a recipe there for a scratch paste, which is basically means homemade paste. Um, or made from scratch, and um, that also works well. But um, the uh, Renshaw paste, this actually, the flower and petal, the flower and modeling paste is actually gum tragacanth base, which dries a little bit quicker than CMC. Um, so as I talk about, you know, like the petal paste, for example, the Renshaw petal paste, which comes only in white, that is a, a CMC based paste. So that one, you of course doesn't, you don't have to add the sugar paste or roll fondant to it. But these are just recommendations. And again, if you're not a member of the uh, Flower Pro Facebook group, make sure you join that because that's a platform that you can ask questions. You know, people will share information if you're looking for a particular colors or whatever. But here you have your stunning Gerber Daisy. Now this, just like the sunflower, needs to dry for about three hours, all right? And then generally after about three hours, what I would do is I just take that out and then just continue drying it hanging upside down, okay? Um, and then once it's totally dry, we're going to move on to make the calyx of the Gerber Daisy. So now we're going to move on to the calyx. So once your Gerber Daisy has dried, all right, so first thing we're going to do is going to remove the sponge pieces. So I'm going to take those out. And you can, of course, just put those in a little container. Now you'll notice that you're going to sometimes have like a little gap here. Now on the sunflower, that wasn't a concern because we, of course, the calyx is quite large. The Gerber Daisy calyx is smaller. So what I'm going to do here is just going to roll some little um, small sausages of pink paste, okay? And then I'm going to just literally use those to fill in. I'm not going to actually use any egg white or anything on here. So I'm literally just going to just take like a little sausage of paste there. I'm going to use just a little cornstarch onto that. And I would just use that. You can just use like your Dresden tool. You can just use that to smooth that in and just uh, fill that in. All right. So you're just going to fill that. You don't need to worry about the very bottom because the calyx will cover that over. We're just going to just fill that in where you have the little groups. Okay. So then we dust it. You won't really notice those seams. Now, when we make the calyx, we're going to use the mold here and we're going to use this part here. Now, the uh, sun, sunflower calyx is like a multiple, multiple layered calyx, if you've already watched that video, YouTube video. Um, and so also a Gerber daisy is similar, but this can be done with little small daisies built up, but they'd be very, very thin. But this is a way we came up of emulating that effect. This is a, a little mold, all right? So first of all, when you do this, we can make this in two halves or we can do an all-in-one version. Generally, the two-half version is gonna look more textured and have a better texture, but I'm gonna show you both methods. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use here number six size ball of paste, all right? So this is green color. This is just a green, green paste. So I'm just gonna condition this make it into a little cone shape. And I'm gonna just take again a little tiny bit of fat here and put into the calyx and uh, 
to use a little corn flour on your paste here. And then what I'm going to do is actually going to put that into the mold and I'm going to hold my thumb here. All right. So when I press it in with my finger or my cosmetic sponge, you see my thumb is actually going to keep it uh, into the mold. So this will keep it square. You see, you're going to flex the mold here and then you can just take this out with your here and there you have it looks like a little Christmas tree. So in fact, this is really cute to do. Like, for example, if you're doing little cookies or you could do this on a petty four or a small cupcake, you could do it as a half Christmas tree. And then you could decorate this little icing sugar powdered sugar onto it. You actually make those as little Christmas trees or those of you who do cards, you know, you could do this on cards. And then what you do is you then repeat this um, the same way. So this is very much like when I show my lily buds, when I show uh, my rose cone is done like this. But on something like the rose cone, um, obviously the rose cone uh, is, uh, can be the one half can be dry, like my pine cones. Here we need both halves soft. So you just repeat that with your second piece of paste. So again, it's going to pop that into the mold. So remember, use your thumb. So you see when you then press this in to the mold here, like that, that will give you the, the second one. Now the second one you leave in the mold, okay? And then what we do is you take your little bit of egg white, and you put just a little bit of egg white, or you could use Super Bond on here as well, you know, so which is a strong glue. And then you take the second half, you put the second half on the top like that, just flex the mold together, okay? And then what you're going to do here, you're going to just going to remove that. So when you actually remove it, all right, you want to actually take your tool here right in the middle of the seam and it's going to just remove that. So you see how you have a little three dimensional Christmas tree. So again, you know, this will be adorable on a little petty four. You could put this onto a little petty four and you could use that. This is the one here, but as I said, it looks like a little tiny Christmas tree. So really, really cute, cute. But then when we do this on the, for the, um, Gerber Daisy, all right? So now what we're gonna do is you've got that right in the middle, okay? You're going to actually just push that through the tree. So it actually comes out the top of the tree like this, you see? Now, another flower or another thing you could make with this would be thistle, all right? So when you do like a Scottish wedding, if my mother was Scottish, so obviously like my younger brother when he got married had thistles and roses. So you could actually use purple thread or cotton, and then you actually can use this for the uh, back part of the thistle, okay? Um, and um, so you make a hole through the middle. I'm gonna take your Gerber Daisy. Now this one is actually on a full length wire, just to sort of show you the length here you can make this so you're then going to thread this down through the middle of the the calyx here all right you're just going to just slide this up the up the wire here like so all right and just going to slide this up just carefully if it should come apart just just gently press it together but remember don't be too rough because you want to keep that nice texture and then what we're going to do here is we're going to then brush some egg white on the flat part of the tree. All right, so it's gonna be basically on the bottom of the tree because that's gonna be our point of contact. And this is gonna just go and um, be pushed onto, gently pushed onto the back of the Gerber Daisy. Now then we're gonna take your companion tool and with your companion tool, we're gonna use the needle tool end and I'm going to just start to work the bottom branches onto here because this is sort of really how it is in real life. So you're just gonna actually just work this onto the back of the flower. Okay, and that will give you your calyx. And then where it meets the stem, you just almost just fuse that down and you're gonna then just use your stem like that, all right? So that would be how you would do and so that's the calyx done with the two halves. Now you can also, so this for example, is done as an all-in-one one. So if you were doing say, you know, two dozen Gerber daisies, this is a little bit quicker because um, also remember Gerber daisies, a lot of times you really won't see the calyx. So it's like you can do a simplified version. So this is actually a number seven size. All right, so if you're going to do an all-in-one, so this is like the rose cone, we can do the rose cones in two halves, so we can do an all-in-one which typically um, is what I do for most of my roses because it's a one step process. Okay, so you're gonna just take your, you're gonna make that into a little cone shape, just like you did before. Again, just put a little tiny bit of vegetable fat into there. 
going to just put this into the mold. All right, hold your thumb there and just sort of press that in with your fingers so it's flat on the bottom. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your tool here. All right, going to go into the middle here like we did before. You'll flex it, you'll turn it round, and then you're going to just sort of press it in on the other side. Flex it, and you can go around three or four times there, so you're going to get that same sort of texture. Um, it's not going to be as defined because obviously when you're moving it and you're flattening it a little bit. But as I said, this is an alternative method. Then you go all the way through the center and then you slide that up. So this is like basically done, as you can see, as an all-in-one one. So you can see the texture is going to be a little bit more defined on the one you do in two halves. But they said this is a slightly quicker alternative uh, if you were obviously doing lots of them. OK, so I always like to show, um, you know, in my videos, obviously options you have. So depending on time restraints, things like that. And uh, so that would be how you would do the Gerber Daisy. And then the calyx just needs to dry for about 15, 20 minutes is enough time for that. We're then going to move on to the dusting. So in the next segment, I'm going to show you how I dust and finish off the Gerber Daisy. So now moving on to the Gerber Daisy uh, dusting, I'm going to use a combination of magenta and a fuchsia color. Of course, as I said, this is just specific to the color I'm making. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take equal amounts. Of course, you can mix this up and keep it in a little container as well. So it's about comparable amounts of the magenta and the fuchsia. I'm going to mix those together and it's going to make a beautiful sort of uh, pinky color. It's a nice bright pink. So it's going to use this color here. Of course, doing this on a napkin or on paper towel, it's then easy to put this back into a container. Uh, so you can just use a little container. So I've already done some of the coloring on here. So what I'm going to do here is going to use my brush and I'm just going to just brush from the outside to the inside on the petals. But I'm not coming all the way down because I want to leave the original color. So I'm just going to come about two thirds of the way down the visible part of the petal. All right. Going to just carefully dust. Now, when you do the inside petals, you're using like a pouncing technique. So I'm actually going to actually dust the back and the front of the petal at the same time. OK, so again, just going to just use a little bit of that pink color, just about two thirds of the way down. And then we'll also do the just the back. But you can see the original color is a lot lighter. Then we're going to just build in this stronger color. And that's going to come down all the way to the calyx. OK. All right. So it's going to give you a base color there. And then we're going to take that um, color here. All right. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to use that same color with a small brush. And I'm going to put that just around the, the sort of the edge of the rim. So just where the rim meets the I'm going to come around here with that pink, almost like in a circle, just around the edge of the rim where the hollow part comes out. OK, then I'm going to take a little bit of black and a little bit of brown. OK, so I'm going to use some black and brown. Gain about equal amounts of the two colors. I'm just going to mix those together. Black looks wrong, you know, I mean, it's, it's almost like a sort of charcoal -y color. So you're just going to use the black and brown mix. And then we're going to use that to dust the eye of the Gerber Daisy. So we're going to use that with a brush and going to go round. So you see, I'm going to go around in a circular movement. So this will actually give you that color just into the eye of the Gerber Daisy. OK, and then we're going to use. So now we want a little bit of green. So we're going to use some. This is some apple green color. OK, so with some apple green. I'm going to brush around the, the top part here. So the top of the, from the pink, just going to come around here with your green. And so you see how that blends everything together nicely. Just don't load too much color on your brush here. All right, so you're going to get that green around there like so, OK? We're also going to put just a little bit of green onto your calyx and just onto the very, very base of the petals. So you just almost like where those branches meet, you're just going to put a little bit of green just blending onto there um, like so. OK, and that will give you your color. Now, once your flower is completed, um, we're then going to steam this. All right. So we're going to bring in your steamer here. See how you have a beautiful color here. 
I'm just going to bring in my steamer and my steamer is going to be brought in here and then I'm just going to just gently steam this all right so just going to just steam this for a second on the back of it as well and what that's going to do is going to sort of just set the colors and uh, so this will set the colors beautifully on the flower again remember that high shine all right this is one that I dusted earlier you see that high shine will disappear but you just get that very subtle remember with dark colors good idea to steam them now with the Gerber Daisy when you're finishing the Gerber Daisy off um, just like I showed on my videos of using the calla lily doing the calla lily and also doing the um, the tulips the small French tulips um, and the um, obviously the flowers with the tubing so you can use a uh, a plastic tubing like this because Gerber daisies when they're used especially in a modern contemporary arrangement they don't really have anything uh, any leaves on them when they grow in the garden but when you actually have the stem of a Gerber daisy just a long stem so what you can do there is you can decide on how much you want exposed out of the cake so if you were doing again those of you who do craft if you wanted to obviously use these to make Gerber daisies in a vase arrangement you know if you obviously wanted it to be um, you know 10 centimeters 20 centimeters whatever you decide you want okay so you decide how you want where you want that and then what you would do here is you just will cut your tube in to the length you want take your tube in here remember this is used for tying up garden uh, tomatoes and things like that you just slide this up the stem here like so and you see how that will then just go on. So if you were doing your Gerber Daisy and you were doing it in a vase arrangement, it just makes a really, really smooth stem, you see? Um, and uh, if you were doing a modern wedding cake where you wanted to make a couple of Gerber Daisies, you could of course have these um, on there. And then if you're doing, like putting it onto a cake, you could just obviously, however much is exposed, um, I'm gonna use this on a cake with daisies, with white marguerite daisies. So I've just literally got about two centimeters of tubing up there. Uh, but you see how you have obviously the Gerber Daisy here. So a really stunning flower. I hope you'll have a lot of fun using this. Remember, this is uh, obviously part of the ultimate sunflower daisy um, mold. And uh, we look forward to seeing all of your beautiful colors that you create in your Gerber daisies. And uh, till next time, sweet wishes, and I'll see you again real soon.